What is going on guys, Quality XA here today and today I'm actually bringing you guys a brand new Curse of Osiris interview. Now this is an amazing interview, if you guys would like to check this out there is a link in the description below, it's absolutely phenomenal and I beg that you do actually go and check it out because it's jam packed full of information about Curse of Osiris but regardless I'm going to go over it today and uh, if you guys do enjoy this please smash a thumbs up now and let's get right into this. So, on Mercury, players will find all the activities that are also present on the remaining planets of Destiny 2, these being public events, lost sectors, adventures, primary missions, and of course, a new social hub. This hub is going to be the Lighthouse, an area that only few players of the first Destiny have seen and will host Brother Vance as a reference, NPC, and a vendor. This disciple of Osiris will not only lead players in their adventure in the main Mercury area, but also through a large portal to an area called the Infinite Forest, a Vex simulation that lies outside of space and time. The missions offered by Osiris' curse will prompt players to explore Mercury and reach the deepest of depths of the Infinite Forest to find out what happened to Osiris after his exile from the city. So this actually sounds extremely awesome, the plot for this story sounds absolutely incredible and I really want to learn a load more about this infinite forest place, being a uh, little vex simulation just sounds really really cool and I want to see how these simulations work, is there going to be things that trick our mind, maybe if we jump for an area it will actually uh, kill us or something like that, but we'll just have to wait and see but regardless this is still a really excellent little feature what they are putting in. Just the fact that it is a Vex simulation sounds really cool to me and the fact that we are going to get Brother Vance as a NPC in the lighthouse is still going to be really cool as well and cannot wait to see what other NPCs are also going to be in the lighthouse. Next we actually have some information about Osiris. So it says this, Osiris is an exile of the Guardians and he has been one of the mentors of Ikora Ray. Like all sorcerers, Osiris is also a traveller of the Traveller, and of all that concerns light and its counterpart, the Darkness, but other obsessions and the Vex are one of them. During his Vex investigation, Osiris went looking for information in the depths of the Infinite Forest, and that's why he disappeared. No one knows what has happened to him, what he has done in recent years, or what capacity he has acquired. That is why Ikora asked your guardian to look for his mentor. You will have to understand what happened to Osiris during his last few years and gather all the information useful to understand and address the Vex threat on Mercury. So again, sounds really cool. I'm really glad that we're going to find out a load more about Osiris. He seems like a very interesting character and also an awesome, awesome warlock. There is a load that you guys can actually check out on the lore of Osiris, but regardless, it does look like we're actually going to find a load more stuff about him in game which again is really really awesome indeed so next we have some information about the vex and it says this we want to let you know how they operate how they think and how they exist outside of time how their machines work and how vex uses them to achieve their goals during the expansion you will know different aspects of the mysterious race in different timelines so it does seem that we'll actually be time traveling in this DLC as well. As you guys may or may not know, Osiris was actually a traveler of the traveler, as said in the past. So maybe there was some time traveling that he could actually do to actually go and investigate the Vex. Now again, this links with the simulation worlds of the Vex. So we may actually be able to travel back in time or maybe travel forward in time to find out more about the Vex, which again sounds awesome and really cool indeed, but that is just a little bit of speculation. Next, we're going to be talking about the mentioning of the raid activity. So Dave Matthews said this, the exact definition of a new raid activity has aroused much curiosity since the announcement of the expansion, but during November, we'll have three stream events to talk more in detail about the curse of Osiris and one of them will focus on the activity in question, so I can only advise you to follow them. So a little tease there, there was of course the mention of the raid activity, but we didn't actually get too much information. I'm really actually hoping that this is a brand new raid, it will keep us a lot more entertained, 
and it will give us two raids to do per week which again is more content for us to actually do. Next we have some information about Osiris's ghost known as Sagira or Sagira. So this is the Osiris Spectrum. This is the first time the player is offered the opportunity to speak with the spectre of another guardian. A comparison that allows you to listen to a different perspective to better understand how spectres see the world and how they interact with their guardian. All the elements that help to compose the narrative picture of the Curse of Osiris, Sajira's personality is very different from that of what a spectres of the player. She is a bit insolent, has a strong character and loves to express her opinions and in the expansion you will see all of these aspects emerge. That said, Osiris's curse will of course include a good amount of new weapons, new armour, all in the Osiris style for all three classes. Now I am really excited to see what kind of armour that they can actually bring in this. We do know that they are raising the level to 25 and the power level is also going up to 330 I do believe. So again this is really really cool and will give us a load of opportunity to try out a load of new armour. Which again is extremely awesome. I'm a big fan of the armour that they usually release in the DLCs. Um, but yeah really really cannot wait and obviously the osiris armor in my opinion in destiny 1 was absolutely epic trials of the nine wasn't the best so i'm really hoping they can bring back some awesome armor and weapons in this new update next we have a question from the interviewer which says this with osiris's return will we also see the return of his notorious and then this was the reply. As you know, in Destiny 2, Osiris, Trials has been replaced by the Trials of the Nine. Now we have the opportunity to do something completely different with Osiris. But to find out more, you will have to connect with the game starting next 5th of December. So this is very interesting. We could be getting a brand new game mode or a new way to actually play Trials of the Nine. Hopefully they actually introduce something a little different maybe even playing with less players so the 3v3 game type what we did have in destiny 1 just an opinion but um it does look like dave matthews is actually hinting at some more game modes with the osiris so again really really cool indeed next we have some information that the expansion is going to contain three new maps two are going to be available for everyone and one is going to be available for ps4 users only as for modes, the expansion will not add new modes, but internally they are working and developing new ways in which they can add new game modes that are ready as soon as possible. So again, some new game modes are on the horizon, but we'll just have to wait and see when they are added. I'm really hoping that they add Free For All again, or should I call it Rumble, as all you Destiny 1 players call it. It was an extremely fun game mode. I'm just hoping they do add it, because when your friends aren't online, Rumble was always a good Crucible game mode to play. And then we have the last paragraph from Dave Matthews. He says, the story of Osiris Curse starts right here after the end of Destiny 2 campaign. Our goal is to contribute to Destiny's fable story so the players perceive the history of this world as something continuous and coherent. It is no coincidence that in Destiny 2 we have included elements that are already referring to Osiris. In order to prepare for the stage for the next act of the story, I don't want to anticipate too many details, but that is how we work to expand Destiny's fiction and imagination. So you can expect us to continue this path even after the release of the expansion. Now one thing I did pick up on, he did say that obviously they've placed some stuff in the Destiny world that refer to Osiris. Now this asks a lot of questions because there is hundreds of thousands of references actually in the game. All of these scannable objects that you can actually look at. So there's obviously references to Siva as well as the Vault of Glass. There is hundreds of stuff where there is actually big references. So it does look like we may even get Siva in the game at some point. Or maybe even visit a load of places that we visited in Destiny 1. Maybe even go back to the Dreadnought. But... We'll just have to wait and see. It does look like we're also going to be getting a load of old characters back, which again, really, really cool indeed. Just really wanting to see what they can actually vendor to us though. But again, we'll have to wait and see. I know I've said that so many times this video, but that is what this is. A big speculation as well as a really cool interview, but it was jam-packed with information. So if you guys did learn something new in this video, I want you guys to smash that like button. 
subscribe if you guys are new around here, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.